family and friends, we are going to begin the funeral service for Mr. Melvin Mel D. Druckmann. People who are here, if you have a cell phone, I'd ask you kindly to place it in a silent mode or turn it completely off at this time. And I'd like to welcome family and extended, uh, extended family and friends. Uh, I'd like to welcome you via live stream as well. Services will be conducted by Rabbi Eleanor Nepler. Welcome everyone. Can everyone hear me? Okay. As Peggy said, my name is Rabbi Ellie Nepler and I am honored to lead us today in celebrating and remembering the life of Melvin Druckmann. And in addition to remembering, we are here also to support each other, to support one another at this time of life transition for all of us. We're here to support Mel's wife, Elaine, his children, Jeff, Randy, Stacy, and Lara, daughters-in-law, Jen and Jen, and son-in-law, Joe. Uh, his grandchildren, Ch Kelsey, Dustin, Chase, Margo, Sophie, and Addie, and great-grandson, Miles, and other family who, and friends who are gathered here today in person and also on Zoom. So Jewish tradition provides a set of rituals for mourning that can be helpful both emotionally and spiritually. Um, and because of COVID, we are not always able to engage in those rituals in the same way that we would have, which can sometimes make this kind of a loss seem even harder. So I invite each of you, wherever you are, whether you're here in the room or whether you are um, on Zoom watching via the live stream, to just imagine yourself surrounded by family and friends. Imagine yourself surrounded by whoever gives you comfort. Because it is our human connections that, keep, that help us to bear the grief that we feel today and that will help us to keep Mel alive in our memories. It's traditional to begin the service by reading psalms and uh, readings from, uh, from, the, from the Jewish tradition. In the words of Ecclesiastes, a season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven, a time for dancing and a time for wailing, a time for birthing and a time for dying, a time for speaking and a time for silence, a time for seeking and a time for losing. This time of mourning is a complicated time filled with many emotions and memories, both bitter and sweet. So we begin our service this way uh, with psalms and prayers that connect us to the 3,000 year old tradition, the Jewish tradition of the people of Israel and the eternity of God. I'll continue with Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. What is the source of help? My help comes from Adonai, the maker of heaven and earth. God will not let your foot give way. Your protector will not slumber. See, the protector of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. God is your guardian. God is your protection at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day nor the moon by night. God will guard you from all harm. God will guard your soul. You're coming and going now and forever. If you'd like to join me in the reading of the 23rd Psalm, it can be found on your program on the inside of the first page. We'll say it together in English and then I will chant it in Hebrew. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will not chant the 23rd Psalm in Hebrew. Mismor lidavid Adonai roi lo exar Binat eshear bitseni Halmei menu chod yenach aleini Naf shi yeshovev Naf shi yeshovev Yan cheni b'maglei tzedek Leman shemo Gam ki eilech Begeitz al mavet Lo irara Ki atai madi Shiv techa Umishan techa Shiv techa Umishan techa Ema yenacha muni Tarokh lefanai shulchan Tarokh lefanai shulchan Tarokh lefanai shulchan Neget zor erai Dishanta Vashem en roshi Dishanta Vashem en roshi Dishanta Vashem en roshi Kosi revaya Ach tov Ach tov Vachesed Yirdefuni Kol yemei chayai Veshavti Veshavti bevet Adonai Veshavti bevet Adonai Leor Echyam I'd like to share a poem. It's called Memory Work by Jack Reimer and Sylvan D. Caymans. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of the buds and the rebirth of spring, we remember them. 
and in the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember them. For they are now a part of us as we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we have joys we crave to share, we remember them. When we have decisions that are difficult to make, we remember them. And when we have achievements that are based on theirs, we remember them. So long as we live, they too shall live, for they are now a part of us as we remember them. I'd like to now invite the kids who are grown-ups, Mel's kids, Mel and uh, Elaine's kids, to up to the podium. And I think Jeff is going to be speaking on behalf of the group. And after that, we'll have uh, the grandkids, and then I'll say a few words. Kind, passionate, selfless, hardworking, humorous are all words that describe our dad. Our dad made the world a better place and we greatly miss him. On behalf of the four of us, together with our spouses, Jen, Jen, Joe, and all the rest of our family and support system, we want to share some of our favorite memories of dad with you today. Um, Dad was an incredible electrician. He was a magician, and to watch him work and what he could accomplish was amazing. And over the years, all of us had a chance to work with him. Some of us actually worked. Some of us just went for breakfast and lunches. Um, a couple of things that I really remember, and I was one of the ones that really worked. Um, <laughs> So he, he did a lot of work at Mazel Metals, which was an aluminum recycling facility. It was a dump, and it was dirty, and there were rats, and it was bad. But before we started work, we went to Lou Mitchell's every time before we went to work at Mazel Metals. And he knew everybody at Lou Mitchell's. And um, I mean, I continued to go there for years and years and years and still do because of that. The other one, which happens to do with food as well, um, we used to go, before we worked locally, we went to Mr. Allison's restaurant in Mount Prospect to get their breakfast. And back in the day, it was huge. So my dad would always say, save your toast, save half your ham, and we got lunch. <laughs> so Randy remembers how dad always enjoyed traveling to various places that he lived and enjoyed the local culture, the food, and, and the drinks as well. Uh, places such as Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Rhode Island, Stevens Point, New York, uh, and South Florida. And he always brought home some Stevens Point beer with him. A favorite memory of Stacy's was when her University of Evansville graduation was canceled due to rain. And our dad called the president of the university to complain, and he actually, he actually got him on the phone and had a conversation. He was relentless and fought for what he believed his daughter deserved. And he did that with everything. And you can just ask Comcast and <laughs> some of the healthcare providers. He, he wanted what he was due. Uh, he was so proud of Stacy and wanted everybody to see her graduate. graduate. One of Laura's favorite memories, and it's all, <laughs> it's all one of our favorite memories too, um, was for Laura's master's graduation party. Dad was obviously very, very proud of his daughter graduating with a master's. Um, so he encouraged everybody to celebrate by doing tequila shots. Um, and some of, our, um, some of our parents' friends and some of our uncles <laughs> encouraged us to step it up. So um, we started setting the timer on the microwave so that every, we can't, we can't exactly agree on how many minutes it was, but it seems like it was every five minutes everybody was called to the kitchen to do another shot of tequila. And when our mom found out what was going on, and it took a little while, but when she found out what was going on, she poured everything down the sink. 
But dad went to the liquor cabinet. He found more, some little <laughs> airplane bottles, um, some other liquors. Um, it even got to the point where we ran out of limes to do with our shots. So we started using um, cantaloupe and watermelon <laughs> and the like. No matter what anybody asked dad about, you know, whether it was a broken air conditioning, plumbing, uh, making t-shirts, getting the best food in town, our dad always had a guy. <laughs> Senior in high school when I hurt my knee um, and had to go to a doctor and we had never been to an orthopedic doctor. Well, I take that back, we probably <laughs> had. But uh, he wanted it the best. So somehow he tracks down um, Dr. Teddy Fox, who at the time was the orthopedic doctor for the Chicago Bears, and got me in there the next day and one of the scariest doctor visits I've ever had. And, <laughs> but he was the best and he told us, I mean, within like an hour, you're gonna have to have that operated on and we didn't believe him, changed doctors and sure enough, end of the football season, we ended up with surgery. Um, he, knew it, he knew a guy at Vienna, <laughs> for hot dogs and salami sticks, and everybody here is partaking in those. Um, the guy at Maurice Linnell for cookies. Uh, he worked at Riddell uh, football helmets for a while, and we all ended up with some football helmets. And a lot of dad, when a lot of times when dad came home with those goods, he would often say they fell off a truck. <laughs> so. And to us, dad was our guy. And you'll hear the grandkids talk to, I mean, he knew where the best of anything was. He, um, one of us mentioned the other day that he was Google Maps before the computers even existed. He knew every hundred of every block in the city of Chicago, every cross street. I mean, he could draw you a map and tell you exactly how to get there. Um, dad also had connections everywhere. When dad worked for the Hilton, um, and Laura and Joe got married at the Hilton in Naperville. Um, he got us access to the concierge lounge. Um, and this provided a lot of us with our 15 minutes of fame because at the same time there was a big charity golf event going on in the western suburbs. So we got to drink and hung, hang out with Jim McMahon, Jack Wagner, uh, John Brody, John Elway, Mike Shanahan and John O'Hurley uh, from Seinfeld. So, and it was a blast. And Jell-O shots thanks to, I think, maybe Dennis and Nancy. <laughs> so I, and if you got to see the video beforehand, you'll see us hanging out with all those folks doing Jell-O shots. Um, one of our favorite family memories and definitely his uh, was going to Galena over President's Day weekend. So we probably went 17 years of an entire family. And every year it wasn't everybody, but for a lot of years it was. Um, and it was one of his favorite weekends for the entire year. Um, there was a couple of years, too, where he was sick with pneumonia, but he insisted on going and being with the family. Um, every morning, uh, Pa uh, left early to go to the general store um, to get eggs, bacon, coffee, treats. Um, he never really participated in the sledding, the skating, or turkey bowling, but he sure enjoyed watching the family partake in all that. And I think the grandkids will talk about that a little bit. Our mom and dad uh, have been married over 60 years, loving each other while also driving each other a little crazy. And <laughs> It happens in every great marriage. Uh, Dad recently showed us a bag full of love letters that he wrote to our mom in 1958 when they broke up for a short period of time. He was relentless in writing his love to her on a daily basis. He wrote, every day I miss you more if that is possible. Every time I pass your house on the way to work, my heart misses a beat. Love always Mel. We love you, Dad, and we'll, you will forever be in our hearts. And as Mel would always say, with a hug and a kiss, bye, baby, be good. Thank you, Jeff, Lara, Randy and Stacy for sharing those memories. And now I'd like to invite up the next generation, the grandkids. And I believe 
Chase and Kelsey are going to speak on behalf of the grandkids, but you can all come up. Do you want to all come up? All right. Um, so there's an old Druckmann saying that is, um, never be the first to leave a gathering. You don't know what's going to happen when you leave. Um, so when I left Lara's last night, it was decided that Chase and I would speak today for the grandkids <laughs> and the great grandkids. Um, the seven of us, which Miles is outside, um, obviously were her, his favorite people in the whole world. Um, he was a very funny man, and he told um, the best stories. So now it's our turn to share some of our favorites. Um, these are not in the order of his preference for us. They are sort of random. <laughs> <laughs> so Miles first, who's um, my one-year-old. Um, during quarantine, Miles FaceTime with Nana almost every single day. Um, and while Pa did not like to be on camera, you could always see him trying to stealthily look over Nana's shoulder <laughs> without being on camera so he could catch Miles' smile. Um, or you could also hear him sort of yelling from across the room um, some sort of commentary on what I was telling Nana about. Um, and Miles, his favorite memory, of course, is that he actually got to meet Papa um, last October in person. Addie. There she is. Mm -hmm. um, Addie could always count on Pa to be there to cheer her on the softball field, volleyball court, and on stage. Um, and even though it was a long drive out to Iowa slash Batavia, <laughs> um, he would still, him and Anna would still make as many games as possible. Um, she has a lot of great holiday memories as well, um, and for as long as she can remember, Nana and Papa came over for Christmas Eve and always made it very special. Um, one of those special times that she also remembered, too, was when her parents um, abandoned her for two weeks to go to Italy, and she stayed with Nana and Papa, and when she, she was missing them the most, Papa was the one that comforted her when she couldn't settle down. Uh, another fond memory she had was visiting him when he used to work at Home Depot, um, and visiting him at Home Depot and doing woodworking projects. Um, she'll miss his big smile and his laughter. For Dustin, it was hard to pick one favorite memory um, because there were so many. And I just want to insert here that the older kids, me and Dustin, call him Papa, but somehow the younger kids, it, it changed to Pa for the younger grandkids. So we'll, we'll, we'll stick with our original Papa. Um, Papa was always there for him, um, whether it was coming to watch him attempt to play baseball, being at all of his graduations, or even when he just had random electrical questions, because Dustin now does electrical things. Um, <laughs> for all of Dustin's major life events, and even the minor ones, he knew that Nana and Papa would be there. Papa always thought of others and found joy in just being there for his family. Um, Dustin remembers one of those Galena trips that my dad talked about um, where we happened to have um, a big sledding hill right out back of our house um, and Papa spent the whole day um, driving us from the bottom of the hill back up to the top so that we could sled for much longer and do many more sled runs um, and he had I think he had hot chocolate and it was very warm in there um, so we really appreciated that um, and of course, he found time to go to the general store and grill us all hot dogs, um, which he did teach all of us that we could not put ketchup on, even if we were like three years old and really wanted the ketchup. Um, he also used to love taking us to some of the theaters that he worked on and he had done electrical for and showing the projection rooms. Dustin was very into this. Um, and telling, telling stories about running audio for Michael Jordan, which I don't think I've heard that story. Um, he was a great man, truly remarkable grandfather, and it's hard um, to think that he won't be in the audience for our, for our future milestones. Um, and then for me, um, in 2015 and 2016, I had to fly to Chicago a lot for work. Um, in some of the trips, I would stay with Nana and Papa. Um, I could have gotten a hotel, but I don't know if any of you have ever been at Nana's house on a weekday morning, but the breakfast is like amazing, five stars. <laughs> so why would I stay in a hotel? Um, so on those mornings, Papa would drive me either to the train station or sometimes he would just say, I'm just going to drive you all the way downtown. You don't have to take the train today. Um, and during those trips into my office, um, I got to hear so many stories that I hadn't ever heard before. 
stories about stuffing $5 bills into envelopes for an alderman's race <laughs> way back when. Um, some tunnel under the original Macy's building. Papa sneaking into jazz clubs when he was like 14 or 15 years old and getting kicked out. Um, and of course, I got the full story of every building on the route that he had wired, which was like all of them, <laughs> um, where his favorite breakfast and lunch spots had been. Um, so I, I really have a lot of great memories of Papa, you know, almost 31 years of them. Um, but those morning drives, I feel like were the times that I really learned the most about him um, and I really cherish them. I will now turn it over to Chase for the rest of the grandkids' memory. So for Sophie, Sophie held a very special place in Pa's heart, uh, especially for Tuesdays. For 15 years, every Tuesday night was spent with Nana and Pa, so you can just decide for yourself who's the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesdays meant that Pa picked up Sophie from school, and when she got to the car, he always asked, where's it going to be, so they could go to Sophie's favorite place for dinner. Dinners were always fun because of Pa's stories. Her favorite was when he told her about their childhood and when Nana and Pa first met. But some stories didn't end so well. Some ended with a side eye from Nana. <laughs> After dinner, Sophie went back to their house and spent the night. They would help her with homework, even if they didn't know how. He, he always wanted the best for the love, his loved ones. Sophie will always remember his smile, his one-in-a-million relationship with Nana, and she will never forget Tuesdays. For Margot, during quarantine, Margot became pa Pa's favorite grandchild. <laughs> Mar Margot could call Nana and Pa at least three times a week to talk and check in on them. She was also tech support for whenever Pa had trouble with electronics. Back when Addie, Sophie, Margot, and Chase were younger, Pa would take them to hidden parks. No one knew how he found them. He would just drive all of us to them, the, to the parks, and sit there and watch us all of us play. He was always so happy to spend any bit of time with the grandkids. One Thanksgiving, Margaret remembers in particular when she got her head stuck in the railing of an upstairs balcony. <laughs> As the entire family watched from below and laughed and took pictures, <laughs> Pa ran upstairs and started pulling Margot out of the railing. <laughs> For me, when I came to applying to college, the only thing I wanted to write about was Pa. In fact, I think that was one of the real reasons why I got into Madison. So I'm going to read a little excerpt from my paper. My grandpa and I have built a very special relationship ever since the day I was born. He watched me since I was an infant, and we would enjoy being around each other. He would also take me along on his jobs, and I would get to witness him being an electrician. Sometimes I would even be able to help him out. We always had a very special connection based on common interests. We would talk about current events, whether it be sports or news, but we would also talk about the past, about the days when he was a kid, about jazz, about old, his, old, his old job, and all the crazy stories that went with it. He would pick me up when I didn't have a ride, I would meet him for lunch on days when I had off school, and we would have dinner on Sunday nights where we watched the football games. He showed, me, he showed up to every single one of my sporting events, rain or shine, supporting me no matter what. He was willing to drive half an hour to, to pick me up. The bond that I had with Pa will be always special to me and one of the most important bonds in my life. And I think we all, he'll stay in our hearts forever. And we all love him very much. Thank you, grandkids. I'll now say a few words about, about Mel. As you've heard from everyone who's spoken already this, this uh, afternoon, Mel Druckmann adored his family. He was, among other things, a skilled electrician, a voracious reader, a lover of music, a storyteller, and a connector. But the most important thing to Mel, far and away, above all, was his role as a husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather. His family was his greatest treasure. Mel grew up in an Orthodox home in Albany Park with his sister Naomi 
and his parents, Abraham and Sarah. At Roosevelt High School, he was a wild kid, part of a club called the Funny Fellows, who, according to Elaine, did a lot of crazy things. And Mel definitely had a rebellious streak. He stole his father's car to go for joy rides with friends and skipped Hebrew school to hang out at the boys' club instead. Um, but Elaine told me the funny fellows all eventually straightened up, and, uh, and he remained friends, they remained friends with several of them long into adulthood. And Elaine and Mel continued to see them socially. Mel met Elaine on a blind date when they were teenagers, uh, set up by a cousin of Mel's who also knew Elaine. And they fell in love and were together as a couple until they married at 20 and 23 and uh, settled in the north suburbs where they would live and raise their family. Oh, hi, Miles. Mel became an electrician like his father, and he worked hard. He had a deep respect for getting the job done right and with integrity. Um, he worked as an electrician for various places, as you've heard, the Hilton Hotel, had his own business for a time, and he even worked on the iconic Hancock Building in downtown Chicago, uh, which was then the second tallest building in the world as it was being built. His family recounted that he didn't like to say no to anyone, and so he would drive through a blizzard if he needed to in order to get to a job on time. And as you heard Jeff say, his kids called him a magician because he was so good at what he did. And when each of the kids eventually bought their own houses, Mel did the electrical work for them and with them, I'm gathering. And Mel, from his work around the city, knew Chicago like the back of his hand, and everyone would call him for directions and he could give, as you heard, an excellent tour of the city, pointing out all the places he had worked on, being Google Maps before there was Google Maps. Mel served honorably in the Air National Guard. He was an avid reader. He read everything. And when his arthritis made it difficult for him to hold a physical book, he began devouring audiobooks instead with the same passion. He loved music, in particular jazz, um, but a wide range, as some of his favorites were Buddy Guy, Maynard Ferguson, Eric Clapton, and Fleetwood Mac. And he had, a, he had a dry sense of humor. Now, I have to say, this is my first time meeting the entire Druckmann clan, so I totally get it. The Druckmanns are funny, and <laughs> the Druckmanns are excellent storytellers. <laughs> um, and, and Mel was a connector. He loved to meet people, to talk with people. He was always looking for and finding points of connection. Um, Stacy told me that when he went to the heart clinic for his weekly, his weekly visits, it wasn't long before he just made friends with everyone there, and they would laugh together and tell stories as if they'd known each other for, for ages, and they simply adored him. But as I said before, above all, Mel loved his family. He was devoted to Elaine and the kids, and later when the grandkids were born, he immersed himself deeply in their lives. He was a natural at being a grandpa and adored his grandkids immensely and immediately as soon as they came into the world, and they were his greatest source of joy. He was a hands-on dad and a hands-on grandfather, fiercely loyal and devoted. Mel understood the value of both practical and emotional support. He was there for you, for you when you needed him, and he seemed to know when you needed him. And I think it was Chase who shared with me that um, his grandfather would call and ask if he needed a ride to practice before Chase, Chase even had the chance to, to ask for a ride. Mm -hmm. And uh, just having that kind of a special relationship with each of your many grandkids is really, is really, it's really something else, I think. Um, and you heard about Sophie Tuesdays, or Tuesdays being Sophie nights. And uh, just, just Mel and Elaine seem, just have a relationship with each of their grandkids as an individual, which I think is just a, a wonderful thing to be, to be seen in that way and to see someone in that way. Taking time to get to know each of the grandkids as individuals and to build a unique and special relationship with each one of them. Mel encouraged the kids to follow their passions and to work hard in school which is no doubt one of the reasons why there are so many advanced degrees, several master's degrees and a PhD among the next generations. The trades had been hard on Mel's body and he wanted the kids and grandkids to have a more comfortable and easier life than he had had. 
He was so proud of them and would take any opportunity to praise their successes. If Mel met someone who was a nurse, he would exclaim, my daughter's a nurse, do you know her? <laughs> and then a conversation would begin. And I think I heard uh, where Lara teaches that if you were wearing a, a sweatshirt or a t-shirt or something, he would say, do you know my, do you know my daughter? Um, so Mel rebelled against the strict upbringing of his Orthodox Jewish family, but he made Jewish tradition his own, and he embraced the parts that were meaningful to him. And to him, Judaism meant holidays and opportunities to get together and celebrate with family. And Mel made great fried matzah and latkes. And even in the last year when his health was failing, he was so thankful every time the family was able to be together and grateful to have made it to another family milestone. Even though he enjoyed the finer things in life, a well-concocted martini with an olive or an old fashioned, he followed doctor's orders and changed his diet because he wanted to be around his family as long as possible. And he would say, at least I made it to this one. I didn't have the opportunity to know Mel, but in talking with his family, gathered together on Zoom and here in person and hearing the stories shared with both tears and laughter, these are the kinds of stories and the way the stories are told that are the reflection of somebody who lived his life deeply, deeply connected to his family, to his friends, to his community, to the world around him. They're the reflection of someone who loved deeply and was deeply loved. I think that if Mel could be here today, he would look around the room and be so proud of the legacy he's left behind, of his children, his grandchildren, his great-grandchild, he would know that you will, that he will live on in your hearts, in your words, in your deeds, as you seek to make his memory for a blessing in the world. I'll now chant El Malay Rachamim, the prayer where we ask God to care for Mel's soul and grant it proper and peaceful rest. El Malay Rachamim Shochen Bamromim Amse Minucha Nechona Tachat Kanfe Hashchina Bemaalot Kedoshim Vetehorim Kezor Harakia Mazirim Et nishmat Moshe David ben Sarah ve Avraham Shehalach leolamo Began Eden tehei menuchato Ana Baal arachamim Asti rechu beseter knafecha leolamim. Utsror bitsror hachayim et nishmato. Adonai hu nachalato. Vianuach beshalom al mishkavo. Venomar Amen. If you'd like to read along with me, the translation is in your program on the inside of the first page, El Marelet Malay Rachamim. O God, full of compassion, thou who dwellest on high, grant perfect rest beneath the sheltering wings of thy presence 
among the holy and pure who shine as the brightness of the firmament unto the soul of Melvin D. Druckmann, who has gone unto eternity. Lord of mercy, bring him under the cover of thy wings and let his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. Be God's possession and may his repose be peace. Amen. Losing someone, even after a long and very full life, leaves an empty place in our hearts. And Jewish tradition has a phrase, zichorno livracha, to make someone's memory a blessing. And it's a, a compact phrase, and um, it's loaded with so much potential meaning. Uh, and there are different ways of interpreting it. So what does it mean when we say, we, we ask that someone's memory be for a blessing? And what it means to me is that it's up to us to keep our loved one's memory alive. And we can do that by doing things in their honor that bring blessing and goodness to the world. And Jewish tradition doesn't place a large emphasis on the afterlife. It's really about, like some other traditions do, it's really about what happens here now. But one conception of the afterlife in Judaism is that it's found in how someone lives on in our hearts and in our minds and how we take what they taught us and we make it our own and we keep it alive in the world. So, Zifrono Livracha, may Mel's memory be for a blessing. And you will make Mel's memory a blessing when you love and support and encourage your kids and your grandkids with both words and actions. When you celebrate uh, holidays and milestones with joy and with gratitude and with togetherness. And when you make a connection with a stranger who then becomes a friend, you'll be making Mel's memory a blessing. So it now falls to us to tell his story and to pass on his qualities. I wish strength to all of us going forward. May you com be comforted by the love of family and friends and by your memories of Mel. We'll now recite the Mourner's Kaddish, which is in your uh, program on the back, and I'd like to ask the family members to rise as you are able. Yit Kadal, Vyit Kadash, Shemei Rabba, Bealma, Divra, Hirute, Vyamlich Malhute, Bechaechon, Uvyomechon. Please say along with me if you would. Uvchaye de Chol Beit Israel, Bagala Uvizman Kariv Vimru Amen. Yehe Shme Raba Mevorach, Leolam Ulalme Almaya. Yit Barach, Vit Paar, Vit Ramam, Vit Nase. Vit Adar, Vit Ale, Vit Alal, Shme de Kudsha, Brichu. Leela Min Kol Birchata Vishirata. Tush bechata v'nechemata, damiran be'alma v'imru. Amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shemaya, v'chayim alenu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Ose shalom b'imramav, hu ya'ase shalom alenu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. You may be seated. We stand here in sadness, but we also stand here in gratitude for the time that Mel was here on earth. May all who mourn today find comfort in the years we were given and the memories of him that will continue to live on in family and in all of those whose lives he touched. As we go forth from this place, may the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort all the bereaved among us. Hamakom yenachem etchem betoch sha'ar of leit zion virushalayim. May God comfort you among all the mourners of Zion and Jerusalem. Amen. Shalom. This does conclude the service at the chapel. The interment will be private. Just a reminder, if you'd like to leave a note or a video for the family, 
There are some links on our website. Uh, the video goes directly to the family or nobody else can, can hear it. The notes are, are up um, for everyone to see, but they will go to the family as well. Also, Legacy.com also has a place where you can leave the family a note if you'd like to go there as well. So on behalf of the family, uh, this does conclude the service. I thank everyone via live stream as well. We are going to end the service. We're just going to start the video montage one more time. Thank you.